And to kick off, I'm going to invite um, one of our uh, uh, governing board members um, to join me up here just for a sort of intro discussion on um, executable standards is, is what, we're talking, what we're talking about and what that means in the standards world. So um, if Andres Sokal could join me on the stage, please. Andres is the Vice President and CTO for IBM US Federal and responsible for IBM's industry solution technology strategy in support of the US Federal customer. Andres has been appointed an IBM Distinguished Engineer some time ago now. Time ago, yeah. that's right. He represents the IBM Software Group on the governing board of the Open Group and is vice chair of the Open Trusted Technology Forum, and he also chairs the Open CA Standard Program. And welcome, Andres. Let's have a Actually, have a seat. Actually, you, you meant the Open Trusted Technology Provider Standard, OTTF. The uh, well, the I'm, forum. Your chair, your vice chair of the forum, aren't you? The, I'm vice chair of the Open CA. The Open CA, yes, right. the Open CA Standard. Yeah. Okay. Well, take a. <laughs> take, a, take a seat. I just don't want to have Peter get, you know, come off, come off stage <laughs> and have him get upset at me. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So the reason, the reason I've asked Andres up here and, and to kick off uh, the, the theme for this morning is Andres has, has uh, raised several times over the last few meetings at the governing board of the Open Group. Um, we should be considering doing executable standards in the Open Group. It, you, we do. We do great stuff with the way we do standards, but there are other, there are other things going on outside, and uh, we should be thinking about how that relates to the open group's approach to things and what we should do. So can you just introduce the concept without going into specific details, maybe? But what's, what's the idea of when, you've, when you brought this to us and said, OK, you, there's other stuff going on, other ways of doing standards, basically based on code. What's the concept? Well, the concept of executable standards is that we've gone through an evolution of uh, you know, our thinking about how to standardize over a 20, 25 year period, maybe even a little longer. Uh, and today, you're seeing this convergence between uh, the creation of open source and, and standardization to create a foundation for innovation. Um, whereas previously, we really thought about standardization from a, a really hardcore paper specification perspective. At least that's how we started off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, different types of standards, and some of them are, um, have certification programs that go along with them and testing, and some don't. So, what does the executable approach bring that the the more traditional approach, the call them paper standards for want of a better description. What, well, maybe a little history might yeah. not be a bad idea. Yeah, sure. So when we first started uh, with standards, we, we talked about standardization. And uh, standards really started, um, you know, if we think about the open group, with, mm -hmm. with the open group and the, and the two bodies that, you know, were the, the, the constituted the open group. Hexopen and the Open OSF. Application. OSF. OSF. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what were they trying to achieve? They were trying to achieve interoperability, mm -hmm. right, and create a, a set of technologies that you could ensure interoperability and standardization across the industry. And it was really based on a, a very concerted effort of the industry at that time to write the specification and write the standard. In fact, in, if we really think about this, Steve, we started off with executable standards as a concept. We kind of got away from that. If you think about CORBA, um, mm -hmm. that was really more of a paper chase. Mm -hmm. um, and CORBA ended up not being so successful because we would sit down, we would spend hours and hours uh, you know, working with some of the most premier minds in the industry, coming up with a specification. And everybody would go off in their own corner and go implement. And they would come back, and it really wouldn't interoperate in the way that we thought it would. So we really realized that uh, our original approach, which was the foundation for what we did here in the open group, was the right approach. Uh, and then you see that in the convergence of, or, or the, the uh, emergence, shall I say, of open source. Uh, and you then begin to see this idea of, well, if we created a foundation, uh, a code base that can be a foundation for innovation, we can ensure interoperability uh, and standardization 
you know, becomes more effective over a period of time. So yes, you definitely have specifications, especially for APIs and interoperability. You do have certifications, uh, especially to ensure that uh, the integrity of interoperability and the implementations, but then you can actually layer on uh, your value-added capabilities as a vendor or a customer uh, on, on these interoperability layers based on open source, and you've got a, a real uh, environment that has a, a tremendous amount of support in the industry. Uh, everybody understands that piece of code because it's open source. Um, and we all understand that it's uh, where the, the rough edges and the, and the value is in the implementation. Um, and um, a lot more value and, and time to market is decreased. So effectively the code the code provides the platform upon which innovation occurs, and and it's self-documenting in in a way, right? Right. So you don't have to write the you know the the mini books on on the specification of the standard itself. The code is the standard. Right. So we've kind of gone from uh, you know sta standardizing to innovate to, uh, to innovation to standardization. Right. So we, we're creating code that becomes the standard, becomes the foundation for that innovation. So, in an, so this is things like examples like OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, things like that that are, that are providing a platform. Um, now I know there's some dispute as to whether they're standards or not, but yeah. it's that kind of thing that you're talking about. As well, a, as we're a, forgetting as a that we had a few charts too, but... Um. Well, we do, yeah. We do, if, they want <laughs> to, if we want to show them. <laughs> Why don't, we, why don't we go forward? Uh, yeah, so the, you know, that's a really great um, point. So we have a, a, just a huge number of uh, foundations and universities and vendors that are working together uh, to create you know, the new cloud platforms and the new tools and DevOps platforms that are um, going to be important for the future uh, execution environment. Um, and I think it's really important for us to, to be part of that and to realize that when we come up with a concept, um, we need to potentially ground that in connectivity to some of these other groups or implement our own open source so that it becomes a foundation for innovation. Okay. So in an open group, in open groups history, we've done, uh, we've been involved in things like uh, plug fests and unplug fests before. Is is that a similar thing, or is this, um, is this different in some way? Yeah, plug fests are really, uh, you know, under the covers guerrilla marketing. Um, what it does is it gets people to, you know, play with technology that somebody else came up with, uh, and extend it, and it gets the millennials interested in it. Um, what's really different you know, in today's world with executable standards is that you are uh, trying to achieve some level of interoperability, uh, some, you know, a piece of innovation, and you're coming up with a common code base, uh, and, and that common code base defines the layer on which you actually, you know, continue to add value um, and uh, new ideas that aren't part of that original, but extend it um, and add value to it. Maybe even are somewhat, you know, Kind of what we call, if you hit the next chart, um, open plus, right? So you can, you know, you can be your own, uh, you know, open source vendor if you want to, and you know, assemble open source, and that can be challenging by itself, you mm -hmm. know, because you're not really focusing on your core competency, or you can go proprietary, um, which has its own, you know, upside and downside. You know, one of them being vendor lock-in, or you can go this route of open plus, where you're actually using the open source and the standardization to create interoperability uh, between different implementations uh, of of the standard and using that foundational code base. And different vendors and different uh, organizations can extend it and you can use it in any way that you would like, and then sometimes these extensions become part of the standard. Right. Yeah. I love the vendor lock-in assured. It's, all, it's like a certification program, isn't it? So. <laughs> yeah, we still have, you can still have uh, certification programs. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, certifications are done to ensure that people are, are uh, following the standard or using it, or know how to use it in some sure. cases. Sure. Right? And that ensures interoperability too. 
So when it came up at the, uh, the governing board, the, the, the initial area that we thought uh, was, was most, uh, most natural fit um, for trying this out in the open group was the Open Platform 3.0 forum. Yeah, they're, they're looking at building a uh, building what the third platform should be and and defining that. And um, that's that's where we've kind of put our toes in the water on it so far. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you go to the next chart, um, a lot of those standards are are really focused on creating that whole software defined data center. And you know you can't do that unless you actually ensure interoperability. So that's a, you know a large focus of the industry today around standardization. Uh, and this is essentially the sweet spot for mm -hmm. Open Platform 3 uh, and some of the work that we're doing there. And I think we have a fantastic opportunity to make an impact in the industry in this particular area. Right. Are, there any, are there any areas that you've heard the forum discussing that are of, of particular interest or where this, this approach of of uh, developing the standard, the, the executable standards would, would lend themselves nicely or most obviously? Yeah, the Internet of Things is a wide open area. We actually have a fairly decent uh, foundation of standardization here in the open group. Mm -hmm. um, and, a, and you know we're an authority in this area, I think, to a certain degree, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a growing area. We, I think a little more energy in the uh, Internet of Things would be fantastic, uh, and it would be a great place to, to add value there. Uh, big data um, and you know big, big data management, the interoperability layer that the team has been talking about. Um, the other big one, to me, is uh, cloud brokering. You know, how do you actually manage you're definitely going to be inter integrating multiple cloud providers. You're not going to just send, ride one cloud provider horse, whether it be infrastructure or platform as a service. And you're going to have to have you know, that brokering layer that allows you to actually you know, interoperate with these uh, platforms. Um, some standardization there would be good because customers are beginning to ask about that uh, layer. Right, OK, OK. So, as, as we do this, what have we got to look out for? Where have you seen it successful and less successful? Or what, what are the kind of things that we have to ensure to make it? I mean, one of, the, one of the initial things I've heard is that maybe this is a different set of individuals yeah. than typically participate right. in an open group uh, meeting and an open group there, standard. There's a place for everybody, right? But um, if you hit the next chart, um, you know, if you look at these uh, current standardization efforts that are foundation for innovation based on open source, uh, you got them you know, in pretty much every single category around where technology is heading today. And um, uh, you have to be able to code. I think you have to understand the okay. technology. Um, because really, you're writing the standard by writing some code and implementation. Um, so proof of concepts are going to be really important. The other thing is that if we take some of this work that's already been done, we can't just simply start from scratch. That's not what, what I'm right. suggesting, right? Let's take some of this, some of our major vendors, and, and, and build on top of them and, and use them, you know, because that's really what standardization is about. It's about a layering mm -hmm. of different technologies uh, to advance uh, innovation. You don't simply start from scratch every time. You don't rebuild the operating system, right? No, you obviously use uh, you know, what you've got out there to create something new. And that's really what we've got to do here. So we're going to you know, you know, look to our major uh, board members and vendors to be able to help facilitate uh, the donation of some of these environments on which we can actually build some of these, uh, these new capabilities and interoperability specifications. OK, yeah. So we're, uh, as I say, we're going to, well, we, we have started putting our toes in the water in the Open Platform 3.0 forum, and, um, and we'll see how that goes. There may be other, uh, other parts of the Open Group, other forums where this kind of approach might be attractive too. So uh, those of you in the room who are members, um, do think about whether, whether this lends itself to, uh, to your particular area of interest or what it is that, that we might do. Um, so from, we, we will, uh, you know, this is happening out there, and, and uh, if this can help us uh, initially in Open Platform 3.0 and maybe in other places, then um, it's something worth having a, 
Yeah. Even if we just think of the open group, I mean, and this is not true, certainly, but if we just think of the open group as TOGAF, where you know, some people do, uh, because they don't really know, understand what we do, yeah. uh, we, we still need to pay attention you know, to what it means to implement enterprise architecture in the context of these new technologies and techniques. But that aside, we have a, you know, a vast number of uh, you know, expertise, but also forums that should also be looking to you know bring in new millennial blood that would be you know interested in in doing the the foundational coding for some of these ideas that we're coming up with um and um and that that will grow our membership mm -hmm. uh and grow our uh opportunities right as we continue to influence these areas and i think that you know our our success in the past um, is is an indicator of how important it is for us to be involved in this current, you know, uh, set of initiatives. Right. Yeah, I don't know. You, you you mentioned enterprise architecture specifically, and to what extent uh, does an enterprise architect need to know about these things? And the answer is almost certainly, yes, they do. And one of the one of the things that we've we've heard a lot of a lot about is what does this kind of approach mean for the more structured uh, approach that enterprise architecture um, requires, and um, you know the the realization I think and the acceptance that that uh, architects need to know um, uh, about these about these technologies and how they might go, might go about integrating them, and the use of standards when you're pulling things together like that is is going to be key. So, well, the other thing too is that um, the industry is lo really looking to take some of these enterprise architecture best practices and codify them, you know, in code right. and make them uh, and, and enable them to be automated so that you don't simply have to do all of the work by hand um, and that the, the expertise lives in some of the code. And that allows you to actually then step up, you know, it's kind of like that innovation uh, piece that we talked about. And, and focus on something new. So IT for IT is another great place. Right. Automation there. Yeah. yeah, where we could take that expertise. I think we've got the expertise, we've got it all codified very well, but now we actually have to distill it into a layer that um, we can reuse across the vendor and customer uh, world in order to actually automate the implementation of that expertise. Okay, okay, good. Well, I hope that provides a little intro to uh, to what we're what we're talking about. Um, we didn't plan on opening up for for questions necessarily on this, but if anyone had a burning one, we'd be happy to to take it. But if not, I think we've got a uh, a panel session that Dave's going to lead going to lead shortly. So uh, we'd probably leave it there for now. So uh, thank you for your attention, and and Andres, thank you for sharing your, your Absolutely. thoughts. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you.